it's the next video doing things with performance robots and what you just saw then was a demo from last time. These robots are controlled by DMX so I was just using some DMX lighting software running a step sequence running through some set motions. And these robots are reliable, robust and transportable which means I can take them to places and do things with them. There will be a lot of YouTube content there such as doing vision recognition and obviously building that stuff into really good hardware. So today we're actually going to make puppeteering rigs so that we can move the robots like you move when you're a human, basically a mini version of the robot with all of the joints linked. And that means we can also record and play back some of those motions so we can set the robot up to do a performance or people can do competitions. I need to make a mini version of the robot, but not one with motors on. What we need to do is put some sort of feedback pots or sensors on the joints so we can get the data out when we move it around and use that as a puppeteering rig to drive the big robots. So I set about drawing all the parts in CAD, making sure all the joints are there and there's a place to put feedback pots. And that gives us quite a good structure. We still have to do the body, but that's basically both of the arms. I've also left a place to attach a handle so that we can put some handles on on the back of the elbows just like the way that you puppeteer a Muppet. So I 3D printed all the parts, these are just in PLA. I did do a couple of revisions to get the tolerances right on the joints because we've got a piece which fits inside a tube typically on each of those joints and holds a feedback potentiometer. So I'm just using normal feedback pots, these are linear 10k pots, each one of those fits in the end of a tube and there's a grub screw on the piece that goes in with a captive nut and that makes a joint with a pot on the end that's supported by the plastic tube. Most of the parts are stuck together with super glue and I'm using the spray activator there to help it go off quickly so I'm just sticking the parts together face to face mostly to make up those complicated joints and so I can print the parts in the correct orientation to get the tolerances right. So hopefully this type of joint is going to be robust enough and I'm using the same principle throughout the whole puppeteering rig. Obviously these pots are quite a lot cheaper than using the magnetic hall effect sensors that I used in the robot arm. Some of the other projects which I'd love to use and have proper joints supported by bearings. At the moment this rotates quite freely and the joints supported mainly by the tube. Obviously this way is held together with the pot only. But we'll see how reliable they turn out and if they're not good we can make an upgraded version. So that's all of my arm motions for those three arm axes and we've also of course got the stick to rotate the wrist when I've built that into the robot, but that seems like a really good range of motion. The robot can lean left and right and backwards and forwards around its abs stroke ribs, but what we need is a mechanism in the puppet that self-centers. So I've built this mechanism, it's a bit like the robot arm self-centering mechanism with fingers which are sprung, and that should support both axes, so they both spring in the middle. And that allows me to lean the robot by pulling the arms around. We can tension those bungees up or put springs in, but for now that gives me the complete range of motion that we have in the physical big scale robots. The puppet's equipped with an Arduino Mega and a DMX shield, which I got on eBay. And the Mega's got lots of analog inputs and it's also got four serial ports so that we can write out DMX from a separate port from the USB debug port. So I wired in all the analog pots there, we've just put pin strip into the shield and the Arduino and we've put sleeving on all of those connections to all of the pots and all of those have a red and a black wire which is the 5 volts and 0 volts and a white wire for the analog signal. So just checking all the wires can move there and we don't pull any of them out whilst the robot moves but we seem to have the full range of motion for all of the limbs. Yes, I've made two of them. So we've got one grey one and one orange one. And that's because we've got two big robots. And that means we can have two puppeteering rigs and two robots. And that means we can have two operators. So perhaps people can do challenges where they have to use the robots to stack up blocks or spread peanut butter on toast. The next thing we need to do is map all of those pot values to DMX values and get those scaled to operate the robots.
So I think that was a pretty successful puppeteering test. You'll notice sometimes the robot seems a bit laggy. It doesn't obviously go as fast as I can move these joints really quickly. It could actually go faster and be more agile, but we've actually got quite a big motion filter on there. So we've got a first order filter taking all the sharp edges off so we get a nice smooth motion. That also limits power draw because if we accelerate and decelerate more, that means the power supplies powering it have to deliver more power for that acceleration and deceleration. At the moment, I'm powering it off two one kilowatt power supplies, a 24 volt power supply at 40 amps and a 48 volt power supply at about 20 amps. And that 20 amp 48 volt power supply is powering the big brushless motors that move the ribs and the waist effectively around and move the arms up and down. And that means I'm limited to five amps per axis. We could go up to about 50 or more amps on the O drive, but the moment we've got to put that right down so the total's no more than 20. So with two one kilowatt power supplies, we're okay powering that off a single outlet socket. In the UK, you can only get just over three kilowatts from an outlet socket. So if I had another 48 volt power supply, perhaps we had one powering those two and one powering those two, then we could actually uh, go up to three kilowatts, but then we've got a three kilowatt robot, which is quite excessive really. So we're gonna try and stick to the two power supplies. I'm pretty sure there's loads of people who've been shouting at the screen saying these pots are rubbish and they shouldn't be used like that. And basically they'll wear out. So they're really meant for a volume control on a hi-fi or something. So um, yes, obviously they're not supposed to take any load. We do have some load on them. Obviously they're holding all the joints together as well, which isn't ideal. So they'll probably wear out and we'll get lots of noise on them. The plan will be eventually to replace the pot shaft with a six mil piece of steel shaft, put a magnet on the end and use the AMS Hall Effect sensor rotary encoders that I used on the robot arm. Um, those cost £12 each instead of 99 pence though. So that's a bit of an upgrade and to do that to both robots with all 12 joints is a bit of an excessive thing for now. So we'll see how long these go. We could put high quality pots in as well, but they probably cost about the same amount. This project is now open source under the GPL3. So I've published all the CAD for the robot and the puppets and all of the code that goes with them on GitHub under a GPL3 license, which means it's open source and you can take it, modify it and commercialize it if you want to. So if you want to make your own robots and go and do events with them, then you can. But obviously there's only a certain amount of people that actually will. Or you can use them for inspiration on another project. So next time I'm going to be making animatronic heads for these robots. And don't forget we've got two of these robots. So we're going to have two heads. The sort of thing I want them to look like is a bit like Chappie out of the movie of the same name or the robots out of Elysium. And eventually we'll have cosmetic panels all over them. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project. And if you want to support me on Patreon or for a YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below. All right, that's all for now.